Welcome back, everybody. It is the Working Brother back at you with another talk. We've got Drago Bosnich back with us for uh, another discussion of a couple of articles that he uh, has published in the last week or so. Has it been a week since we last talked? Yep, something like that. Maybe a bit yeah. more. All right. Um, I want to tell everybody that uh, Drago is an actual person and that I actually met him in real life. <laughs> um, a friend, right. of a, a friend, a mutual friend of ours, uh, and I went down to see him for a bit. Um, Drago is much bigger than he appears on screen. I can tell you that. Um, he is about yay tall. Um, so don't let the camera angle of uh, Drago's webcam fool you. Um, U.S. to double its defense budget. This is one of the articles that you sent along. Um, doubling of the U.S. defense budget while printing money to infinity. Right. Uh, um, I don't know if that really means anything. Does that mean they're going to spend more money? Or they're going to yeah, it's, have it's, more kickbacks? It's like very ambivalent because, uh, you know, as I said, like if the actual inflation not the one that they're reporting if the actual inflation goes any worse than it is already they're going to double it you know without doing anything actually so it's going to double it on its own i guess so um but but in all seriousness uh mark milley like their uh, their chief of staff trend staff uh actually said that uh, in late march and it seems that the congress is moving you know forward with, with this they didn't specify like at what point it's going to double in like comparison to 2021 or 2022, but um, they're talking about it very actively. And I think the the reason might be that they're expecting like a two front confrontation with with both China and Russia, and plus like the BRICS is expanding, so they're going to be fighting the entire world. And you know, every time somebody tried that, it didn't end very well. Like. What do you mean? Napoleon and Hitler, I guess, what are you, very good examples of it. What do you mean two-front confrontation, man? What are you talking about? There's, uh, they're, they're not in conflict with Russia. That's like propaganda. Right. I mean, they are probably on very friendly terms with the Russian side. I don't really know. Like, yeah, you, you're right. Like, I'm probably just spouting Russian propaganda. They're they're in the space station together, aren't they? Right. Right. They love each other quite a lot. I guess. Um. One of the other, uh, talking about how they love each other, um, let's go to one of the other articles that you sent along. This is an article uh, about uh, U.S. not flying drones over the Black Sea anymore. We already discussed uh, how they took down uh, the drone the other time, but tell us, tell us a bit about what this article has to say. Yeah, that specific article is... Uh... I mean, it's not about any drone. Uh, it's specifically about uh, the RQ-4, uh, Global Hawk, which is like, like a very large, very expensive ISR drone that the US uh, Air Force is using around the world. And it's highly advanced. It has a lot of sensors, uh, surveillance, and reconnaissance equipment. So, you know, like since they lost the, the, the MQ-9 Reaper, uh, losing the, the Global Hawk would be like five times or six times worse because it's actually five or six times more expensive. And like they have a lot less of those, um, a couple of dozen, I think, like maybe three dozen, four dozen, I'm not sure exactly. Like they keep that the same one? secret. Is that the same one that the Iranians managed to like spoof the GPS and get it to land and then they copied it? Oh, it's, it's not the, the same one. They actually did that with the RQ-170 Sentinel, I think, and then they, like, copied it. That was a different drone, a much smaller drone, but, like, no less advanced. Uh, but they did uh, actually shoot down one of the RQ-4 uh, drones. Like, I'm not sure, like, how much technology they, they could have just extracted from it, from the wreckage. But I, I've heard claims that they, you know, the mm -hmm. wreckage was relatively, like, in, in a relatively good condition considering, like, it was basically destroyed so uh, i'm not sure like what they did with that but um i've heard like some stories that the, the americans have tried to bomb it but like they they didn't want to risk the f-35 to do that or any other jets so i'm not sure like what happened with that because there, there are a lot of you know conflicting re reports about this from mm -hmm. both sides so like um, i i cannot like vouch 100 percent which version is true 
But if the Iranians do have a drone like that uh, in their possession, it's like a major bro- blow to the U.S. Uh, capabilities um, in terms of reconnaissance uh, around, I mean, global reconnaissance. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, the point is they, they didn't want to risk these very large, very expensive drones because the Russians sent a very clear message, uh, you know, with downing of the MQ-9. And considering the fact, and we talked about this the last time, considering the fact that the, the data that the, these drones are collecting is sent directly to the AFU, uh, which is then used to kill Russians, uh, both civilians and soldiers. I think, you know, what the Russians did with the MQ-9 is was, was a very smart move. They conspiracy essentially, like, stopped flights. Conspiracy theories, man. Conspiracy theories. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> the, the, the U.S. is not working with the Ukrainians. That's... Right. I mean, the Boom. Ukrainian um, deep diving um, uh, group is helping <laughs> the Ukrainian. Budget, there you go. Right? <laughs> there you go. It's the it's the Ukrainian uh, aligned group. <laughs> right. Right. That that's that's what it is. Um, so the next uh, thing that you sent along ties into that two front thing that you were saying. Um, let me switch here. U.S. determined to further escalate by supplying 400 anti-ship missiles to Taiwan. I uh, read about this when you posted it. Um, what can I say? It's crazy. Uh, do you think 400 anti-ship missiles will change anything? How how big is the is the Chinese? Oh, Navy? for sure, <laughs> for sure. The the point is like um, this is the Harpoon um, anti-ship missile. It's quite old. But mm-hmm. the point is, like, it's it's subsonic, it, uh, but it flies very low. So the point is, like, you can't really, uh, you can't detect it, you know, mm-hmm. that easily. Um, but e- even even when you do, you know, like, it's it's not a like it's not a slouch. It's 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 a it's a, it's a very serious threat because it has a very large warhead. Mm-hmm. And of course, the Americans are always updating uh, electronics and so on. So and guidance systems and so on. So the point is, like, it's hardly you know a, a non-threat because. You know these uh, the operation that the Taiwan that the Chinese army would have to uh, launch to get Taiwan is very complicated because it's like a combined arms operation including the Navy, the land forces, the Marines, the the Air Force, and so on. Uh, so, like, if the Taiwanese could use these, uh, if Taiwanese do get all these anti ship missiles, they could target uh, Chinese uh, ports, like not just the, the ships which are, uh, you know, sailing towards Taiwan, but actual ports, because these missiles have a lot around like uh, 200 or, what, or 180 to 200 kilometers range. And that's exactly the width of the Taiwan Strait, uh, of, the, of this uh, uh, water area between the Taiwan and, and the Chinese province of Fujian. So like, it's quite dangerous for the Chinese Navy. Like it's, it's not a non-threat. Like it's, it's way less advanced than the Chinese missiles, but you know, if you have 400 of them, you could actually, you know, repel an invasion successfully, at least like the initial invasion. So <laughs> exactly, you know, I, I <laughs> exactly, yeah. you could, you could, you could repel the like initial wave, <laughs> you know. Yeah, the initial wave, exactly. But but the point is like, what what the Americans are obviously trying to do is to embarrass the Chinese. Like the Chinese can, of course, uh, they can take Taiwan, of course, mm-hmm. but it's just like a question of how many casualties that's going to take. Yeah. And if it takes a lot of casualties, you know, it's just used to politically like destabilize the Chinese government. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like this is why China tries to, is going to try to stop this. So I, I, if, if they're truly going to do this, I think the Chinese might do something before. Uh, you know, they, they get all these missiles because, I mean, they would be crazy to allow, uh, you know, like having so many weapons uh, sent to Taiwan and, you know, doing nothing about it. Um, Electronic warfare is another of the topics yeah, that you sent along. Electronic warfare is certainly good. Right. Go on, go on. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I thought you were you were uh, mentioning the electronic warfare in the context of, of um, these well, yeah. anti-ship missiles. Well, yeah, uh, sure, sure. You, they, can, you can cover that as well. Yeah, I mean, they, they could use electronic warfare. The Chinese are also very advanced in this. And, of course, if, if there is anything they want to find out, they can just ask the Russians, and the Russians will happily provide any information about it. So, the Chinese defense uh, minister recently went to the Kremlin. What do you have to say about that? Yeah. 
Oh, I mean, uh, you know, we can only guess what they were talking about, but I, I'm pretty sure that this ties into uh, the Putin Xi meeting that was already that already happened uh, like last month. Mm -hmm. So it, it's going to be quite interesting, you know, like uh, because the Russians and the Chinese are obviously unifying uh, their um, military knowledge and technologies. And when this happens, um, I wouldn't want to be in the place of uh, NATO and the Americans at all. Like it's going to be quite a challenge for them, I guess. I think it's already becoming a challenge. Uh, you let's get on to the um, electronic warfare capabilities. You sent along an article that uh, outlines how even the West is now praising uh, Russia's electronic warfare capabilities. Right. Um, well, in this case, like it has, uh, like it's the meaning of this is manifold because uh, electronic warfare, the Russian electronic warfare, is one of the things that I've never seen. Or like um, I, I at least I've never seen Western media, um, you know, uh, trash talking Russian electronic warfare systems because they've proven to be extremely effective, uh, you know, in, in uh, jamming essentially like most uh, precision guided weapons that NATO sent to you, to the AFU, and uh, it's um, you know it's it's very very worrisome for for the Pentagon and and you know I've seen this not just in the leaks of course which might be a counterintelligence op but I've seen this like. You know, uh, in um, an analysis by other military analysts who are who are actually you know very reputable. So um, the the point is in this specific article I wrote about how the Russians are jamming the JDAM uh, high precision bombs that the, mm -hmm. the NATO sent to Ukraine, and uh, the, the percentages I've seen are crazy. Like they're saying up to eighty percent of bombs are missing their mark, which is you know atrocious for for a high precision weapon. I mean it essentially that nullifies the meaning of high precision because there's no high precision essentially yeah. it's, it's just like a dumb bomb so yeah. um like it's it's a big problem for the ukrainian military because you know whenever they start flying if if you know with their mix and and two, I suppose sevens you know, like it, it's it's a it's a very high risk they're going to get shot down so if they're missing the mark while you know taking the risk of, of flying you know it's it's even worse for them so the point is like uh, the, the crazy thing is that the Russians are able to jam the GPS signals, but mm -hmm. they're not jamming their own bonus signal. W w bonus is, is the Russian counterpart to GPS. And um, as far as I know, NATO is unable to do that. Like they, if they jam the, G the, the Russian bonus, mm -hmm. they're going to jam their own GPS at the same time. And um, like, I have no idea how the Russians did it. I don't know. I don't know about the American capabilities, but I can vouch for the Russian capabilities because when I was in Donetsk last year, in November, like uh, using uh, GPS to navigate was more of like wishful thinking and suggestions than it was uh, actual navigation. Like uh, whether it was Yandex that you were using or uh, Google's uh, nav maps. Um, You'd like type it in and it would find the route and whatever. And then when you start moving, it would like hop around. And like one second, you're like, you know, two streets over. The next second, you're like two streets back. And then like you're traveling forward. And then like it was crazy. It was it was a very interesting experience. So I can I can see that. Yeah. Um, I would say they successfully are blocking GPS or uh, augmenting it they're not actually blocking it they're just shifting it a little bit you know yeah um, augmenting with it augmenting it, augmenting it with uh, false info yeah yeah basically and and uh, it's interesting that you say that they're able to like uh, separate the glonass and the this this probably is how they're able to achieve uh, high precision even though they're blocking the enemies quote unquote high precision exactly. weapons interesting interesting exactly. uh, interesting take um, one of the one of the things that has come out recently that I'd like to get your take on is uh, Peskov the spokesman of the Kremlin uh, one of um, or is he Putin's spokesman in any case Peskov from the Kremlin yeah, he's like the presidential office spokesperson like officially that's okay. his official title okay the there you go um, so uh, his son recently uh, went to the front and here he is uh, working as a uh, artilleryman with Wagner uh, what do you think right. about that 
uh, already talked about this and uh, what I think is it, it might be like a stunt of some kind mm -hmm. um, uh, because essentially what, what's going on with the Russian um, political elite Many of the kids of these uh, Russian politicians are like trying to fake some kind of rebels or whatever they, they are trying to do. Um, and uh, they're trying to go against their parents' um, wishes or, you know, like trying to embarrass them. Mm -hmm. uh, in some, uh, and, and I've seen reports, um, I cannot like 100% uh, confirm this, but I've seen reports that there, there was an, a backlash in, uh, in the Russian society uh, because of Pesco's daughter Uh, who actually supported, like, she posted something, uh, allegedly, as I said, mm -hmm. like, I didn't see this, but I've seen, like, reports about it. Allegedly, she posted uh, something, I I'm not sure, was it an Instagram or Telegram? She posted something about supporting Ukraine, which, of course, is ludicrous for, you know, for the daughter of a high-ranking Russian official to, to do a, such a thing. So it's very possible that, like, this was, like, a PR stunt by Peskov, to like try to ameliorate the situation because it was quite embarrassing for them for him mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and i you know like i'm not i cannot say like his son nikolai i think his name is nikolai i i cannot say that he didn't fight like i i cannot vouch that 100 but it's very possible like that peskov just told prigozhin like you know i have to get you know my son to do this mm -hmm. for the pr reasons like don't get him killed uh, on the first day or second or or ever so like just you know like put him in an artillery unit and where, where which you, ukrainians cannot reach and uh, this uragan system is quite long range so you know i guess it makes sense for him to be there mm -hmm. so essentially you know like I, i think this is something that most russian officials should do uh, regardless of what their uh, sons or daughters are going to do because um you know there's There's a big divide in like not just in Russia, but all around the world. There's a big divide between the regular people and the elites. And uh, this divide was like much smaller, for example, in the Middle Ages or uh, even in Imperial Russian times uh, in, in like in the, in the like pre-modern era, uh, because oftentimes the noblemen and the kings and emperors would send their sons in, uh, to actually fight, but not like, you know, just go for the like as a propaganda thing, but I actually like to send them to fight because it was important for them to see how battle, you know, works uh, because many of them were actually also military re leaders. Uh, this has essentially been eliminated in our era. So I think this would be a, a good way for the Russian political elite to finally like get together with the Russian people and, you know, end up in the gutter just to fight for the country if if they want to be you know respected by by the people themselves yeah i can hear you yeah uh, fail we'll call that technical difficulties and uh, edit it out right um in any case yeah the uh, the next uh, the next video that we have lined up is uh the ukrainian astronaut Um, we don't take uh, joy in anyone's death, but uh, it's oh, important yeah. to illustrate um, the the power of artillery, and in this case, a uh, mortar shell. And the reason that I bring it up is because uh, other than uh, Prigozhin's uh, showing off of Peskov's son, uh, recently he put out some math that talked about the importance of artillery shells and how uh, 3,000 artillery shells basically equals uh, about 150 casualties on their side. Um, can you talk a bit about that while I play this uh, video in the background for everyone? Right. Well, uh, artillery essentially is, I mean, modern artillery coupled with drones and advanced ISR um, or intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance it is essentially nullifying the importance of our, our of uh, infantry so i'm not saying like it's completely irrelevant of course uh, infantry is always going to be needed uh, i mean you have to have boots on the ground to take an area but uh, like the fighting importance of our of infantry is uh, deteriorating because of artillery, which is becoming extremely deadly. I mean, it, it was always important. Ar artillery is essentially like the god of war, as they said uh, in the Napoleonic era. 
but now it's becoming even deadlier because it's becoming ex like crazy effective in terms of precision and um, drones have essentially revolutionized this because uh, like you don't even need drones to, to use them as a direct fire weapon, like fire, fire support weapons, but you can just use them to uh, observe the battlefield and guide shells. And as we could see on that uh, video you just posted, uh, it's, um, you know, it's crazy effective because the guy was probably thinking, the Ukrainian soldier was probably thinking, you know, I'm in cover. Nobody can, like, kill me. Nobody can shoot me. Like, mm -hmm. there is no, there are no snipers. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, all of a sudden you die because of the artillery, ar precision of the ar artillery. So, you know, uh, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure like 80% of the casualties so far on both sides have been artillery, especially like on, on the Ukrainian side. Yeah, so, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah. From what the videos, some of the videos that I've seen, like uh, that are very not YouTube friendly, because um, you can see a lot of stuff on Telegram that you can't see here. Uh, that's right, everyone. Sure. Check out the Telegram. Uh, Drago's got a Telegram now, too. I convinced him. I'll put a link down here. Right. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Thank you for stopping by. Check out the Patreon if you like what I do. Um, it is only the Patreon that supports me. Um, Inter-EU relations plummeting is another one of the catchy titles that you uh, right. posted after Macron's visit. Um, I want to play a little video for everyone before we get into that, um, in case they missed it. This is a most recent Macron slap. Oh, wait, there's actually audio. I should play it with audio. It's a very, very bad video, but the audio is worth it. <laughs> you can hear the slap. You can hear the slap. It's perfect. Um, so, uh, Macron apparently got slapped again. Uh, what did yeah, you write about in your Chinese article? Yeah, like, I just want to say he's the most legitimate and the most popular French leader ever. Um, on the other hand, like, Lukashenko is uh, very, very, Ill, like, illegitimate and uh, mm -hmm. very unpopular, I guess. Like, uh, pro protests in, in uh, Minsk is completely legal, but it's not very legal in Paris, I guess. Because, not. I mean, the rules fit world order, right? Yeah. Um, so, like, uh, jokes aside, of course, um, like, what Macron tried to do uh, was, like, try to get on China's good side, which failed, apparently. And uh, on top of that, he got backlash from Western countries because he tried, even tried doing that. So, like, it was a um, complete diplomatic failure for him in, like, every imaginable way. Like, so it's, it's, it's crazy what he tried to do. Uh, like, he mm -hmm. tried to get, uh, uh, like, he tried to get, um, like, a head start uh, for France, like, because he obviously sees that the multi mm -hmm. And, uh, like, uh, you know, like, essentially, um, Poland was very upset about this, particularly, like, other countries too, but Pol Poland, the, the Polish government was very upset about this, and they, they you know, slammed his effort mm -hmm. uh, because uh, China is apparently supporting Russia. Um, and as the U.S. claims, even with weapons, which I doubt, to be honest, but I mean, I don't know, like maybe, but uh, I don't think it's any, anything major at this point, um, like yet. Uh, so essentially, like what, well, like he he failed, uh, but he still got the backlash. Like that, that's the point of the article. Like he still got the backlash, but but failed to do what he tried to do in. in China. So it was like a spectacular uh, double failure, like it backfired and he oh, yeah. failed. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Und understandable. What can I say? Um, for our sign off, uh, we've been going on for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I think that's a good little short talk. And for our last video, we've got a, a meme a video of a comparison between US fighter jets and russian fighter jets um what can i say oh we sh probably shouldn't play any music we'll play some other music but the russians uh, definitely have this one in the bag um everybody who stuck around thank you for sticking around 
this long. Drago, thank you for coming back. Always good to talk to you. Everyone, check out the links in the description. Have a good one.